show first hit TV screens. Kevin Rudd was PM. Nokia ruled the mobile market and hair and pants made the mainstream. A lot has changed in the last 16 years, but perhaps the biggest game changer, the meteoric rise of AI. And unlike hair and pants, it isn't going anywhere. First, we were afraid. We were petrified. An imminent threat. Human extinction. Feared AI would take our jobs. We'd have no place to hide. None of us will have a job. AI willing to kill humans. But we grew strong. Look how far we've come along. In the last two to three years, it's really become super mainstream. Even those who aren't embracing AI are likely using it anyway. The TV show picks that pop up on your streaming app, that's AI. Unlocking your phone with Face ID, AI. And when Google Maps alerts you to traffic jams, road closures, or the fastest route, AI. AI is obviously omnipresent on, on the web in the way how we consume many social media networks. A lot of that information is pre-filtered and pre-sorted for us. AI is steering the future of safer self-driving cars. Smart speakers use AI to monitor a baby's breathing and detect heart attacks. It can cut down a GP's paperwork and help surgeons perform procedures that are faster, more accurate and less invasive. AI can now look at MRI scans and um, Alzheimer's disease, for instance, can be identified very early on. And if you'd like an image of me as a flying dinosaur rapping about my love of mollusks, AI has your back. Shell, yeah. I'm in love with a clam. Pearl in the middle. Don't give a damn. But it isn't without its issues. We'll see a lot of our work environments change quite radically. I was going to say 10 years, perhaps five years ago, but I think in the next 12 months. The International Monetary Fund has warned AI could affect nearly 40% of jobs globally. In January, Apple suspended a new AI feature for generating misleading news headlines. And then there are students using AI to pass exams. HSC cheating doubles. Ah! People also have valid concerns around um, sustainability and the environmental impact. Perhaps AI's greatest act of skullduggery? I didn't write this package. ChatGPT did. Jokes. I totally did. Or did I? Shell yes. It's a mollusk move. We groove with the gooey and the briny and shrewd. Shell yeah. Before we get to our guest, oh, excellent from that? you, excellent from you. <laughs> Professor Toby Walsh is a Chief Scientist at the University of New South Wales AI Institute. Professor, there are the concerns around what AI is going to replace or how it's going to work as a tool. What I'm interested in, though, is what it could do to us, how it's going to affect us. How do you think it will? That's a great question because we're already starting to see it is changing us. There's some interesting brain studies just come out of MIT showing that when we use ChatGPT to write our essays, it doesn't activate our brains as much. So it might start dumbing us down. And there's also some really interesting work uh, just come out of Germany showing that we're starting to sound more and more like the robots that they analyzed uh, YouTube videos since uh, ChatGPT came out. And three things they noticed is that we use language uh, much like the chatbots. We use sentences constructed much like the chatbots. And we break everything down into three items. So, Professor, hang on, am I getting this right? We've been so concerned that the robots are going to become like humans when really we should be concerned that the humans are turning into robots. Mm. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't worry that the... the the computers might become smarter than us because we've dumbed ourselves down, not because the computer's got any smarter. <laughs> Professor, another fear is that ultimately they'll take our jobs, that AI will take over, it's ramping up so quickly. Is there a flip side to that? Well, I, I can understand why um, you know, presenters on the project are worried about unemployment. But, um, <laughs> technologies oh, too soon, buddy. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> too soon. But, uh, yeah, technology's already ta always taken jobs away. But it's also always created jobs. And, and there's almost, you know, un, um, unlimited amounts of work in looking after the young, looking after the sick, looking after, you know, retired TV presenters. Uh, much of it done by women, much of it not very well paid, that we could, um, we could actually pay people to do. I, I think the question is, how do we tax the billionaires to be able to afford it? Yeah. Are you saying that the new show on Channel 10 that's replacing the project is entirely AI? <laughs> <laughs> Well, th th there are um, countries where they have trialled out uh, TV presenters that are AI generated, yes. Mm -hmm. But Toby, if we're talking about 40% of jobs being affected, I don't even know how to begin to process 40% of a population suddenly needing new work and jobs that they may not be suitable for. Do we even have 
the capacity as societies to deal with that number of people? Well, we, we did it once before. More than 50% of the population were employed in agriculture and farming before the Industrial Revolution. Today in Australia, it's less than 3% of the population. So we over 40% of people changed their jobs. Um, but, you know, we had 50 years to do that. Uh, the Industrial Revolution didn't happen overnight. But I think the real challenge that AI poses is it seems to be happening overnight. Hi, right, Toby. I don't know what to make of this future. Um, we won't be part of it. Thank you yeah. very much, though, for joining us uh, on one of the last shows we'll ever do. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. <laughs>